Hey guys, how you doing? Today we're going to talk about digital audio stage boxes. We're going to talk about what they are, how they work, what they're doing, and how we connect it all together. So let's go and take a look. Okay, so let's talk digital stage boxes. So first of all, what is a stage box? Well, many of you might be familiar with the old analog stage boxes, which was the end of the big multi-core cable that you used to have that would come up to your stage where you'd plug all your mics and instruments and all that sort of stuff into that. This is no different in essence. This is exactly the same thing. It's gonna live on your stage and it's where you're gonna plug all your instruments and things into. But having said that, there are some significant differences. Firstly, one of the major advantages to a digital stage box is that the microphone preamps are all built into this. Now that can mean a couple of things. It can mean, first of all, that you can improve the sound quality of your whole system by adding one of these because you can upgrade your microphone preamps on your stage in a stage box. Depending on the combination of mixing desk and stage box that you use, it is possible to add a more modern, more up-to-date stage box with better preamps, but do just check as to which model you're using as to whether they're compatible. We'll come on to that a bit more in a minute. The other major advantage here is that we're not sending our low voltage microphone signal a great big distance before it gets to our preamps. Now let me just explain what I mean here. If you have a microphone, something like this one, out of the end of this microphone is gonna be coming a voltage. The microphone here is converting our sound that's coming into the front of the microphone into an electronic signal that's coming out the back. And so coming out of here is an electric voltage, but it's a very, very small voltage. And as with any voltage signal that's sent over any distance, the longer the distance you send it, the more that signal is going to degrade. It's gonna get smaller, it's gonna reduce, it's gonna get worse the longer it has to go. So by bringing our preamps closer to our microphone, and we're decreasing that distance that we have to send that voltage before we start to process it, we're actually reducing the chance of that signal degrading over distance. Now, before we go any further, let's start connecting this in to my mixing desk over here so I can start to show you some of these things in action. So when we come to connect one of these up, what we're gonna need is first of all, a power cable. We'll plug that in back here. And we'll see normally some kind of light that comes on on the front here just to say it's got power, it's alive, it's ready to start working. And then secondly, we need our cable to connect from our stage box into our mixing desk. Now, depending on what system you're using, this cable will vary slightly. A lot of the modern systems, particularly the ones that you might find in churches, are gonna run on some kind of ethernet Cat5 or Cat6 cable but do just check the specifications for your exact model because there are some differences here. Some will have Cat5, some will have Cat6, some will need shielded, some won't need shielded. So just check exactly what type of cable you need for your system. So I can plug this cable into my stage box here. And again, we will see here that there is another light indicating here to say that it is connected through to my stage box. Now, at this point, you might find some stage box models will start to have other lights on the front of here that might start to light up. Because the preamps are housed inside this box, some stage boxes will have little LED lights on here that will indicate whether or not they've got phantom power on those channels. So as you turn phantom power on your mixing desk, it will light up on here to show you that that is active and ready for those particular channels. And from that point, we're ready to start being able to plug things in. Now I've got my microphone up here. Currently I'm recording with a little lapel mic, um, but I can plug this mic now into my stage box. So I have here the other end of this microphone. And if I plug that in here, we now have audio off this microphone. Now I'm just gonna set this to one side for the time being.
So now all of our inputs and outputs from our stage box are available on our mixing desk and we can use them and control them and do whatever we want to them just as if this was an analog stage box like we used to have on the stage. It's going to work in exactly the same way. Now these stage boxes come in all shapes and sizes and again depending on different manufacturers you're going to have different sized ones so you can have little ones like this through to much much bigger ones. Typically you might have boxes similar to this which is 8 inputs and 4 outputs. You can get double that size 16 inputs with 8 outputs but you might also have 24 input models, 32 input models, even 64 input models just depending on the type of system that you're going to be using. And depending on which model of stage box you go for, they're going to have different ways that you're going to use them on stage. So this one, for example, is designed to be mounted into a rack unit. Now you could just stand this on the floor on a stage, but one of the downsides of doing that is these are relatively expensive and with it just being sat on a stage, it could be easily damaged. There are models that are a bit tougher built and more designed just to be stood on a stage, but for something like this, I would recommend that you probably put it in a rack. But that could just be a small little rack sat on stage. That would work fine. The other thing to be aware of with stage boxes is the type of connectivity that they use to connect back to the mixing desk. Now, many mixing desk manufacturers are going to have their own protocol that they use to connect stage box to mixing desk. This is an Allen & Heath system and it works using their own protocol so it's just a straight Cat5 cable from the mixing desk to the stage box backwards and forwards between those two. And the same type of thing will be true for many other manufacturers. But there are protocols that you can use that allow you to connect third-party systems together. So for example one of the most common ones would be a system called Dante. Dante is a digital audio network system that allows you to connect devices by Allen and Heath to other manufacturers all using the Dante protocol and if, if your system works on Dante audio networks it will integrate with any other manufacturer who's also using Dante. Quite often to use something like Dante you might need to add a card into your mixing desk that will give you that output. So this is the Dante card for the Allen & Heath SQ series and again most manufacturers will have a card available for things like Dante or Waves or one of the other types of audio network that you might choose to use. You can purchase this card, plug it into your mixing desk and you will now have the ability to be able to use other third-party devices, stage boxes and those types of things. The other advantage of using something like Dante is that you can use it to connect into computers for multi-track recording and that sort of thing. And systems like Dante will connect via your network system. So if you have a distributed network system throughout your building, you can plug Dante straight into that. And that means you can access it from other locations in your building. If you have a network that runs throughout the building into multiple rooms, and you want to take sound from one location and bring it into another location, something like Dante can work really, really well. Many of the manufacturer's standard protocols will only work on just a straight cable from one device to another. You can't distribute them over a network. Sometimes you can, but it does depend from one manufacturer to another. So if you do need to be able to do something like that, you might want to take a look at Dante or one of the other more advanced network systems that allows you to be able to do that. And it is entirely possible to run both types of audio network from a mixing desk. So if I put the Dante card in here, the existing network system will also work. So I can still use this stage box on that mixing desk and then add the Dante card to connect something else from somewhere else as well. I have lots of options of how I can connect all that together. So finally, what are some of the pros and cons of a digital stage box system? So the pros would be things like improved audio quality, improved networking and distribution so you can connect into multiple rooms in multiple locations quite easily, improved flexibility on stage. You often get more inputs and more outputs by using a digital stage box type system. Many of the older traditional style analog stage boxes might have say 24 inputs but only four outputs 
Whereas if you've got the digital stage box, you could get a 24 input with 12 outputs, which makes things like in-ear monitoring a lot easier on stage. And of course, you also have the much greater advantage of only having a very small, very discreet cable to get from front to back down your building. Gone are the days of the great big multi-core cable that's almost impossible to hide and very, very difficult to install and trying to run it over the tops of doors and all that kind of stuff is an absolute nightmare. Now all you need is just one of these, which is very easy, very simple, very discreet type of cable. And they're very cheap to replace. If anything were to ever get damaged on this cable, changing that is fairly easy and fairly low cost. So what about the downsides of a digital stage box? Well, firstly, there's the cost. They are more expensive. An analog stage box might cost you something like 100 or 200 pounds, depending on how big you go. Whereas a digital stage box, you're going to be looking several hundreds and up to a thousand pounds or maybe even more than a thousand pounds, depending on the size you go for. These also require power. So you need to make sure you've got power available on the stage where you're going to plug this in. And if you do go for a model that should be mounted into a rack system, you then have something fairly bulky on stage and they can be quite hard to hide and a lot less discreet. But if you do want to try and hide it, there's no problem if you have the space and the access to be able to put them under a stage or even just off the stage, either to the side or behind the stage, depending on what space you have in your building. Overall now, more and more digital audio is becoming the standard for audio. It is the way that audio is done and that we're just going to see more and more into the future. As people start to update their systems, the recommendation from most people is going to be upgrade to digital. It is really worth the benefits. All the cons that we had there really are very much outweighed by the pros and the advantages and flexibility and improved audio quality that you get out of something like this is far greater than what you're going to get off an analog stage box. And certainly if you're looking to be doing online church, if you're doing anything that's online or internet based, whether it's live streaming or pre-recording or whatever you're doing, Digital systems give you so much more scope for that going forwards. It is very much the way that things will be going into the future. And the sooner you can get on board and the sooner you can invest into a system like this, the better it's going to be for you, the more you're going to get out of it. So that's it. That's our dive into digital stage boxes, what they are, how they work and what you need to know about them. If you've got any questions, then please do get in touch. And as I say, just do your research, make sure the stage box is going to work with your mixing desk system and then just have fun and get creative with it. There are so many options and so many possibilities with digital audio. It's a very effective tool to have. So that's it. I hope that's been helpful for you. If it has, please do hit the thumbs up. That'd be great. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon as well. And if you think this video would be helpful for anybody else, please share it with them. That is really useful if you can do that. So that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. See you then. Stop that filming quick. How many?